<laughs> All right, welcome to your Everyday Rich podcast. Yeah, what's up, everyone? AOAO. <clears throat> We're your hosts. I'm Jen. And I'm Jason. And here we are. And I got my voice back, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Those lingering cough, though, that yeah. never goes away. Yeah. The uh, the long colds, as as the media is calling it now. Yep. Anywho, but, but it's the, Thanksgiving weekend. It is Thanksgiving. It's October. And, and here we are, recording an episode. That's right. Because uh, what else do we have better to do on a evening after stuffing ourselves full of food? Oh, God, yes. It is uh, Oktoberfest, all right, officially, uh, well, Oktoberfest is over, right? But when sure. does Oktoberfest actually end? I don't even know when Oktoberfest is. It's October, but I mean, when does Oktoberfest end? No idea. Right. Celebrating with some uh, Oktoberfest drinks. This is our very first official recording with adult beverages. Alcohol? It doesn't have to be alcohol, but... But it is. It is. <laughs> But it is. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, I hope you can hear that. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> yeah, today's episode, we were um, pretty much, this is a, let's call it a Thanksgiving slash inflation <laughs> episode. Slash inflation. <laughs> Those are two completely different things and just threw it all in one. <laughs> It was funny because I was thinking about, you know, stuffing, right? Thanksgiving, stuffing. And I'm like, you know, the inflation is very stuffing people with uh, a lot of rising costs. Mm -hmm. and it's a hot topic these days. Challenges with uh, dealing with having to pay for a lot more stuff, a lot mm -hmm. more money for just con uh, consumer goods. Yeah. Right? In an economy which is driven by consumerism getting more expensive to buy shit very but you wouldn't think that's the case because i mean like today we went to uh went to a buffet for lunch which was a great idea but also the worst idea afterwards <laughs> yeah so tired oh my god so we went to a buff asian buffet called dragon legend shout out to dragon legend man this this place is just not sponsored no um <laughs> But we went there for lunch and it was the most, okay, this is not like the first time we've been there. It was the most packed I've ever seen it ever. Well, I th okay. Well, I think part of it was we went at opening, right? With all our cousins and we went at the first seating, the very first seating of the day. And so did two under 200 other like guests it's or insane. 300 guests. Oh my God. It was insane. We were almost at some point where we were just like waiting and we we're just like, what are we, wa I don't even know what line I'm waiting in right I now. I didn't want to eat because I didn't want to wait in line. And you know what was, here was the other thing was that I felt the pressure because our time limit, right? The seating limit was only an hour and a half. <laughs> and all I could feel is like, oh my God. I, I gotta get my food in. I gotta get my food. <laughs> my and money's worth. Yeah. Well, you're the worst at buffets. Oh yeah. I'm just a waste of money. But man, it was crazy. It was bonkers. Not, I think like the food's pretty decent, right? But I mean... It was just bonkers, bonkers because it was packed. It was a packed house. Like it was a Saturday. So, I mean, I mean it is Thanksgiving weekend. weekend. Yeah, it is Thanksgiving people weekend. Go out. Yeah. But it was still bonkers. Like, mm -hmm. and I was not expecting that type of crowd. But you know what? It's been very surprised. I've been surprised over and over again the last couple of months in terms of how resilient the economy's been. It's consumerism just keeps going and going. No, you would feel that because, you know, the market's just saying, oh, inflation is, you know, the inflationary costs are rising every month. It is getting more expensive to to eat, to live, and mm -hmm. cost of living is going up. But you would not think one second that it's actually impacting, well, I'm going to say, the middle class. Yeah. Anyone above the middle class. Yeah. Because, I don't know about you, but... The restaurants we go to are still busy... People are still going on vacation from what I can see. Look at the airports. Like, yeah. I, you know, we're obviously, we haven't traveled for out of the country for a few months. Um, but, you know, looking at people's Instagrams, people that are able to travel, mm -hmm. man, airports are packed. People are telling yeah. me the airports are packed. Yeah. The cities they're going to are packed. Yeah. Where the fuck are people getting all this money from? I have no idea. Doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> 
absolutely no sense. I mean, it was funny where, um, you know, one of our friends is going to Japan. Obviously, the, the Japan, Japanese market has been like deflationary for the last like 20 years. Well, yeah, it's like a good deal to go to Japan right now. I mean, getting there will cost you a good dime. But once you get there, your money is good. Oh, yeah, it goes really far. It goes really far, right? So yeah. it's yeah. just the getting there part is but, difficult. But yeah, like, I mean, if you just look at your own observations, uh, you know, and just kind of how is it impacting you? And I, I would beg to beg to argue that it has not, this inflationary market has not really impacted the middle to upper class income class brackets mm -hmm. uh, or individuals as much as as much as the lower, lower income, income right? for sure and it's a it's a sad cycle because you know this whole argument about raising a minimum wage which i think minimum wage should actually be higher to in order to sustain any like reasonable comfortable lifestyle but it really impacts all these costs that goes up these the bottom line it goes back to the consumer Mm -hmm. But who it really impacts are the low income earners. Right? Because really, I mean, yeah, you jack up minimum wage by four bucks or whatever. Does that really impact the middle class earner who's earning six figures plus? No. No. Right? It doesn't. It's just it's it's minimal. But I mean, it's still it's still a bitch to have to pay an extra like twenty five percent on your food that shouldn't be twenty five percent more. Yeah. Groceries are expensive crazy expensive like how much is a thing of butter now <laughs> i don't know i don't butter is like <laughs> six dollars for a stick yeah like one stick or it's one crazy bar? It's six dollars like a bar like um like a stick which well no a bar but a bar could have four sticks depending on which yeah, one you yeah. buy but those things are six dollars now those things used to be two bucks what time frame are you referring to though i don't know like five seven years ago Oh, yeah. I'm just saying there's six dollars now for a butter. Yeah. It's insane. Well, speaking of like cost, right? I mean, you know, it's turkey season. Uh typically, you know, I mean, you know, Thanksgiving you kind of relate turkey and Thanksgiving, yep. big burr. I saw this interesting story over the week where the conservative leadership was uh t uh roasting Justin Trudeau about this uh, inflationary cost, right? And the the increased cost of a turkey and what it's costing canadians <laughs> to buy a turkey mm -hmm. and they basically pulled up this uh, stat or this flyer from 2015 it was like a dollar 69 a pound for fresh turkey or mm -hmm. whatever turkey turkey and then comparing it to now it's a two dollars and 49 cents yep i mean from a dollar perspective it's not massive but it's 60 percent mm -hmm. increase on your turkey mm-hmm so if you think about that, like, you know, what's a, they said the average turkey now costs $120. So, I mean, it's obviously costing, we all know it's costing more and more to like enjoy the comforts of your life. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I think turkey's ultimately dry, but. I love turkey. But. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes you second guess when you go and buy a turkey. You're like, well, holy crap, I got to feed how many people this? Yeah. Right. Well, in the end, it, turkey was one of the, to me, like whenever I have to host host family and stuff, like turkey is one of like the cheapest things you could. Best bang for your buck. Best bang for your yeah. buck from a protein point of view. It's no prime Like rib. if you go buy, yeah, a roast, like a yeah. beef roast, like it's way more expensive than a turkey. The only thing that maybe compares is like a ham. Yeah. But not everyone likes ham. Yeah. But like turkey is like your best bang for your buck. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Remember um, uh, Tom and Nick Carrazzo on the uh, Your Life, Your Term show? Like mm -hmm. they were they were, uh, <laughs> they were complaining about how when they are going to their local butcher, mm -hmm. about how like even butchers aren't putting certain cuts out yeah. on display anymore because it's just too expensive. Like mm -hmm. they know customers won't buy it unless mm -hmm. they specifically request it. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, I think, to just put some context, like most middle class, upper class income earners, you'll still, if you really want like a top cut of protein or meat, they're gonna buy you're going to buy it. Is yep. it really going to stop you from buying 
some of these uh mm -hmm. i guess, let's say um nicer things no no right and it's unfortunate because i think ultimately it does impact the people of like the lower earners but yeah, i but. think it's more of a for the the higher class or the upper class it's more of a longer term impact yeah. than like a in your face like right now short term impact right yeah. for a family or for a person that's maybe like living paycheck to paycheck that's an immediate impact yeah, it right? always is it's immediate impact like literally like it's every day every month every week like it's immediate impact mm -hmm. versus like you said for a person who makes more money it's not an immediate impact they they're still going to buy the things they're going to buy they're going to complain about it don't be wrong yeah. they're going to complain about it but they're not it's not going to stop them from doing it. However, does that stop the? Like, does it? Does that affect their overall wealth from a long term point of view? I would think so. Yeah, it does. Right. It's a slow. It's almost like a slow drain on yeah. your wealth accumulation. Exactly. It drags it. Like it. Makes it drags it, it down. It drags that's it down. Right. So yeah. that's a, it's more of a long term impact versus an immediate impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a slow bleed. Like you're. It's. Yeah. It's the whole frog in a boiling uh, a pot of water that's just starting to boil you don't realize right yeah because yeah it doesn't you don't feel it right away um and i think part of this why like you know we were thinking about well how what are ways that we could combat inflation or help protect our hard-earned dollars and our wealth mm -hmm. against inflation right and got us thinking about this because i think immediately most people will think okay well like cut back, right? That seems like the obvious thing to do with yeah. with most people. I would say like, don't get me wrong, like call it middle class earners. Yeah. From middle class to uh, uh, lower income yeah. families, that's that's the first thing you always think about. It, well, it, yeah, and it, that's it, good things you're going to have to do. If, if, if you're paying an extra 30% on groceries or 30% on gas, those are necessities. Yeah. Right? So that extra 30% has got to come from somewhere else. Oh, absolutely. Right. So where else are you going to cut 30%? Yeah. Right? I, it's just the way, it, that's just how it works. And I think basically it goes back to one of that, the episodes of our budgeting episode where mm -hmm. this comes into play now. It, it really does come into play because yeah. if you're now basically, you're, you're saying, okay, great point, right, Jen? Well, where do I cut the 30% or where do I cut the inflationary cost that it's costing me more money to buy groceries because that's a necessity where's it coming from but if i don't know where it's if i don't know mm -hmm. which bucket to pull it from then that's a problem yep so i think that's up to that's individually different from everyone of course yeah but like things that come up to mind would be maybe eating out less mm -hmm. right maybe less uber eats kind of thing like those kind of convenience things yep Right, because now it's it's not as convenient to have to pay that extra that yeah. extra money. Yeah, and but, probably uh, discretionary spending, just like you know, yeah. the shopping, like yeah, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, right. But let me throw it back on you. Where would you not cut back on? Because we all focus on cutting back, but where would you not cut back on? For you, for me, yeah. I guess it'd be my Friday night going out to eat mm. for us you mean like every every friday night i don't cook i cook None probably cook. five nights a week whoa, whoa, whoa hold on let's caveat this she does but, not cook all five nights we combine we, yes we cook five nights a week okay just want to make sure i want to put it out there you know I get it <laughs> but friday we do not cook yeah just one of those things so that is something i would not give up I would not give up um, certain memberships that, uh, like from a health perspective. So like a gym membership? Let's say gym memberships or your extracurricular activities that maintain some level of fitness mm -hmm. uh, or help you maintain your health, right? So, yeah, gym, whatever, mm -hmm. this, certain things. Mm -hmm. right? Decided to take a Ninja Warrior class <laughs> three weeks ago and my body has never been in so much discomfort <laughs> ever like things hurt and where i didn't realize things should hurt <laughs> but hey you're having fun yeah exactly and that was one of those things where it was just like yeah no no i'm okay with spending that money um 
But then, yeah, after you review your expenses, it's kind of one of these things. Okay, well, if you know where you can cut it from, it's maintaining that discipline in terms of your spending. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Because even though now you're like, oh, crap, I, you know, I should cut back. It's very easy to just say, ah, it's okay. You know, I'll just go buy it anyways. It's what, what's what's a couple hundred bucks going to do, right? But then a couple hundred adds up four, five, six times. And then you got an extra $2,000 of expense and you're like, shit, what the hell? That's a lot. Right? Yep. But I think I read a stat where like majority of even middle class earners, middle income earners are living close to paycheck to paycheck. There you go. This is a U.S. stat, so I mean. But regardless, if it's an extra 30% Mm -hmm. on groceries, on gas, whatever it is. That thirty percent's got to come from somewhere, so yeah, it's got to balance back out. Well, how could we get how could we get money back? Because I mean, another thing is, like, how do you get some sort of like if inflation is whatever it is four percent, five percent, right? The stated inflation, mm-hmm. stated, stated. Right? I truly do not believe. Like, I think it was last year it was supposed to be like four percent or something. That's yeah. what they stated. I don't believe it was four percent. Oh no way, man! It's BS. I, I, I feel like I spent way more than four percent. Yeah, no way. I think additional. I think groceries alone were like it felt like it was like thirteen, fourteen percent. Yeah, 20%. at least. Gas alone was probably yep. like thirty percent. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know how economics. I don't know how economists like calculate I, that. Just, I don't know what's in that equation, or what they account for and what they don't account for. Yeah. Anybody, let me know. Okay, anybody yeah, knows, know, man, man? Tell me, please. I think, you know, one of those things we've talked about here, um, you know, how do you get an immediate return, right? This is short term thing, this short term yeah. return where it could help you in the long run, because remember, compounding requires time, right? So yeah. if you get it now, it allows you that additional time to compound. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the obvious is to me would be paying off your highest interest debt. Mm-hmm. Or loans, right? You know, maybe you have none. Let's say you have none. Mm-hmm. That's what great. Would what would you do? What would you do? What would you do with your money? How would you protect it? Let's say you got a pile of cash sitting there. I would put it in a high interest savings account. How about a GIC at or like GIC, 5%? Yep. Yeah. Something that makes money okay. or generates money so that you can keep up with the rate of inflation. Yeah. Because... If you know when the definition of inflation, every time it goes up, the value of your dollar goes down. So that dollar that's sitting in your mattress at home, it's devaluing as inflationary values go up. Yeah. Inflation erodes your purchasing power over time. Yeah. So a loaf of bread today does not cost the same as a loaf of bread two years from now. Yep. Um. So yeah, put it in something that generates, makes it go up, makes the value of it go up. Yep. And I think if you're debating, let's say like you have your reserve emergency fund, make sure you keep your emergency fund, but be um, be reasonable in terms of what that is. And I think you need to uh, look at it from your own um, s- uh, situation. It's like mm-hmm. case by case, right? Yeah. So this whole thing where you know they say, oh, three... Three months I'm gonna of say they, they quote, three months right? of expenses or six months of expenses or whatever, right? And I think that's different depending on the lifestyle you live. So you got to keep in consideration. I think if you know, if I was a single person and I live very frugally, mm-hmm. yeah, three months is really doable. Mm-hmm. But you can even make that three months into six months because if your lo- expenses are so low, why could you not expand it even more? Yep. But you know, if let's say you have a family or you have a high mortgage that you got to pay for. Mm-hmm car loans and all this other stuff, that ramp of emergency might actually have to be longer. Yeah. So maybe a minimum of one year, Mm -hmm. right? Versus the recommended three or six months. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing where, you know, even the, uh, the, the consumer market seems very strong. People are still spending their dollars. It's because people still have their jobs. But... In the event that let's say you lost your job, what's the job market now? And I've heard anecdotally through people that are looking, it's tough. It's actually yeah. tough because there's so many qualified people now mm-hmm. that are looking. Mm-hmm. 
whether they need to be looking just casually or because they don't have a job anymore. Yeah, doesn't matter. They're still Com- in competition. Competition fierce right now. Yep. Right. So it's just one thing to keep in mind. So um, <clears throat> there's nothing you can do to combat inflation. Get more income. I think ultimately that's the best way to combat any any inflationary yeah. time. Find mm. a way to generate more income. Yeah. Whether it's switching jobs, asking for a raise mm-hmm. if you don't want to switch jobs. Yeah. Right? Get that bonus. Get that um, commission, whatever that is, right? What happens if you're in an industry that doesn't give you the same luxury of like... Um, larger raises like disproportionate raises raises like you know certain industries you can basically say yeah then move jobs okay get another job or find a side hustle yeah yeah i think it's never been as important to leverage a side hustle it's just something to bring additional income yeah, yeah additional income like i think i think here's the thing here's the here's the unfortunate part about social media where there is a small percentage of individuals that really perpetuate this idea that you know if you're not making thousands of dollars a month in extra side income Mm -hmm. you're doing something wrong i don't know if i believe that but anyways that's what they're saying though Mm -hmm. right and i don't agree with that either Mm mm-hmm and it makes us feel inferior in terms of if you, if let's say the things that you are doing on the side are not generating that type of income, mm-hmm. it's like, well, I feel like I'm not doing it because, you know, this person or that individual or this groups of individuals are saying you should be, yeah. you know, making a lot more. And the whole point of that is, oh, hold on. Sorry, I disconnected my headphones here. I think to look at it as a gradual way of being able to add income, you know, that incremental increase can help significantly. Like starting out with, you know, imagine whatever, let's say you walk dogs. Mm-hmm. I think a dog walker, you know, first dog, 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And that 50 bucks turned to 100 and then 120 or 200 or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And right after that, you're able to like generate 300 extra bucks a month. That's amazing. Yeah. That's your 20% on groceries. That's it right there. Right. And that's, that just eliminated all your whole, your whole issue of like, oh crap, man. Like, do I have to shop at, shop at Longo's or do I get to shop at No Frills? Yeah. That's what I mean, right? right? Like a small side hustle mm-hmm. can help generate that additional 20, 30% that you need. And, right? the, key, and the thing is, is just getting started too with a side hustle because those side hustles sometimes can actually turn into much bigger incomes than your regular job. Yeah, potentially. Or pretty close. Or yeah. pretty close. Yeah. Right. That's what you want. Yeah. But yeah, ultimately, because the whole point of saying why start a side hustle, it's because if you reframe your potential on earning, it's unlimited, right? We feel like, you know, we've grew up in a culture where it was your earned income was based on like a specific job right? mm-hmm. and you looked at that job bracket coming out of school you're like oh you know uh, an engineer makes this to this range right coming up remember it had yeah. all those brackets oh yeah and then we went to like mb uh, different mba um seminars mm-hmm. remember we looked and we we're like so if i do my mba and spend a hundred grand and i go to this industry i'll be making this much money whoa hold on a second that doesn't make sense right but then also like we look at it as these are our limiting potentials yeah versus you know we're always trying to find ways to like how can we save money versus well how do i find ways to make more more money money. yeah the opposite the other side of the equation yeah and this whole enterprising mindset of like okay well you know, when I look at opportunity, when I look at things, how do I see opportunities versus um, barriers? Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, you know, I always got to see someone like it's that whole glass half full, half empty kind of thing. Yeah. Right. 
I mean, it's, it's human nature, though. It is. Right? It's human nature. Everyone's going to look at all the things that can go wrong versus all the things that could happen. Yeah. And part of it is reframing kind of your approach to that. And, you know, being th- being the Thanksgiving weekend is is also just being thankful for kind of what you have. And also being thankful of the opportunities that you have to be able to put yourself in. Yeah. You know, if you are in a position where you have you have a home to live in, you get to eat a nice big turkey, mm-hmm. you get to drink some booze with that turkey, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, you get to watch some Netflix or whatever the hell it is, or sit in front of a lounge or go to a game or a concert and go to bed at night. You know, it's really, it's, you should be very thankful. Yeah. And the fact that you have an opportunity to even think about saying, oh, well, you know, I could start a side hustle and make mm-hmm. some more money. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Because a lot of people actually don't, don't have it. Well, because they can't. Yeah. Right. Not, I'm not going to say because they, they don't believe in themselves. It's just they physically, they don't have the capacity mm-hmm. because of time even or resources. Resources, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Lots to be thankful for. Yeah, lots to be thankful. Especially this Oktoberfest uh, liquid. <laughs> How's your uh, grape juice? Good. Hmm. Might go, go on a detox. Uh, sorry, what's that? Like the one we went on last year. Oh, yeah. Before Christmas. After Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah, for just uh, for context, we went in a a, a booze detox for like six months. A quarter. Was it uh, a quarter? It was four only... months. Four months. Four months. Just four months. Yeah, from September to December. Yeah, I remember people were asking, "Is everything okay?" <laughs> like, yeah, we just wanted to see how we would feel. Yeah. Oh, and that's another thing too is, you know, you don't realize like things like like booze. Just for instance, for booze. You know, we all complain about the pricing of booze if you do drink, Mm -hmm. you know, um, if you do enjoy some alcoholic beverages. But that's like one of the easiest expenses to cut out. Oh, yeah. Right. We actually, yeah, we saved a lot of money, like, not going to LCBO. Yeah, it's ridiculous how much money, like, you end up saving. And you don't realize it because you're, like, casually drinking. Yeah. Not to the point where it's, like, it's, like, a problem, but... (laughs) Are you trying to defend yourself? Yeah, of course. I'm going to defend myself. <laughs> Let me set this record straight on the internet, okay? I'm not an alcoholic. Um, but like, just like, okay, for instance, right? You go out to eat. Sure, if you want to have an alcoholic beverage, go ahead, right? But it's like the easiest markup for restaurants. And that's why they say, like, would you like a drink or anything like that, right? I rarely get a drink. Yeah, that's because we're Asian just, and we're cheap. I'm so cheap. I'm just like, I'm just going to finish my meal. And then let's go home and drink it. (laughs) It's so true. The only time I get a glass of wine is if it's like an occasion. Mm -hmm. Like it's a birthday, it's an anniversary, it's a, you know, whatever. Then I will get a drink. But I would say night, like the rest of the time, forget it. I remember this one. (laughs) Just eat and go home. (laughs) Here's the thing. If booze was as cheap as it was in Europe or like in Asia... Yeah, I would get booze all the time at restaurants. Yeah, but it's not. No, when it's like it's five, like, six times markup, you're like, what yeah, the hell? A glass of wine is like almost ten dollars now at, at a restaurant. So ten, it's like fourteen dollars. Yeah, it's fourteen. Yeah, depending on where you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And these are wimpy pours. They're not like. Oh know, yeah, no, they're this is like a six ounce. They're not club member pours. No, for sure. Now, here's a story though. Here's a story. I remember when we went to Boston uh, many, many years ago, and we went out to dinner, and. You know, they had, you know, would you like to have a, gla- a bottle of wine? And we're just like, hey, we're on vacation, right? Let's look at the wine. And I'm like, I'm one of those, listen, I'm not going to get like a $100 bottle of wine because, first of all, I don't care for an expensive bottle of wine. I was looking at it. I was like, oh, okay. Hey, um, okay, what's the, what's the, like, I filter like a lowest, lowest to highest. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like. Okay, let's get this one. This one was, um, it was like 45 bucks or something like that, which, like, you know, it okay. seems reasonable, right? That's standard at a restaurant, yeah. I guess. And then we, you know, we had our dinner, and I remember us walking around downtown in Boston. And oh. We, remember this? <laughs> yes. And we were looking around, we're like, hey, let's go into the convenience store, right? Let's go pick up some more booze. Oh, God, right? Yeah, we go back to our hotel yeah. and drink. 
And then it was like, I looked at the, I looked down at the shelf and it's I was $10 like, or something. yo, this same, same bottle we bought at the restaurant was 15 bucks. <laughs> what the fuck? And it's it like, was like literally down the street yeah. from where the restaurant that we went to. It's crazy. And it's, you know what? Because it's mentally, it makes me so angry. Not because it's three times markup. That's standard, right? Three to five times markup. But you're like, God damn, this thing was 15 bucks. It's like, why did I pay $45 yeah. for that bottle at the restaurant? <laughs> medi- it makes you feel like it's mediocre because it's only $15, right? Uh, oh, my goodness. What can you do? Yeah. But it's funny. That's one of those things. Like our parents, my parents never ordered booze when we went out, even for Thanksgiving or whatever. Your parents don't drink booze, though. Yeah, yeah. We're not much of alcohol. Like your your dad sometimes drinks beer. Yeah, but never we never drink booze at a restaurant. Never uh, order it. Mm. Yeah, my parents don't very often. Again, it's only when we when there's an occasion. Yeah. They'll order a glass of wine. But anywho. Yeah. Anyways. Um. Yeah, that's the that's our little uh, that's chat, our, chat on inflation. Yeah, yes, yeah, st- stuffing of inflation. Seriously. Um. Anyways, uh, hope you all have a th- happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble. Eat lots of turkey. Drink lots of wine if you drink. If you don't drink wine, it's too bad. Have your soda water. Or just get your drink of choice. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, by the way. Here's a funny thing, just before we leave. Mm-hmm. So, this is the thing about when I grew up. I actually didn't. Ha- I had turkey. I had uncles that would make turkey, but just like normal, normal. I'm gonna call it like North American, guaylo turkey. Okay. Okay. Call it the white man turkey. Sure. But then, when I went and met your family, yeah, and we started going into your house. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this stuffed chinese turkey like the uh, sticky rice yeah it's the bomb turkey right it's asian inspired turkey yeah and that's the thing where it's like here's the thing why you know wacky eight wacky cultural things um when you go and try different foods you're just like whoa turkey can be cooked in different ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't put breading inside the turkey you i put- hate okay i hate traditional stuffing like I've tried regular stuffing before. I do not like it. Me too. I don't I, like I it anymore. Don't, I don't like it at all. I've never liked it. That's why I've always liked my family's like recipe for turkey because so inside the turkey, instead of, you know, the traditional like bread, bread, yeah. mushy stuffing, my family puts sticky rice. And yeah. if you know what sticky rice is basically like rice that's like small, super sticky. And then we add shiitake mushrooms and Chinese sausage in it mm-hmm. and it just soaks up all the the chicken deliciousness <laughs> chicken deliciousness <laughs> and it's freaking bomb it is really good but you know what i still like cranberry sauce Blech. cranberry sauce is so good man. when it's made right cranberry sauce is delicious gross <laughs> you and my cousin-in-law can just eat the cranberry sauce well your cousin-in-law is from the east coast so that's right <laughs> anyways um Help us by uh, liking and subscribing, and uh, we'll be back in a few to have some more living room conversations with y'all. A couple pounds heavier after we stuff our face with turkey tomorrow. Oh, well, well you're going to have to just go work out even more. Yep. All right. Anyways. All Take care, everyone. See ya. Later. Bye-bye. Peace, peace. The Everyday Rich Podcast is presented solely for general informational, educational, and entertainment purposes. Any such information or other material should not be construed as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. It is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a qualified professional.